strange multiplicity of sensations seized me, and I saw, felt, heard, and smelt at the same time. And it was indeed a long time before I learned to distinguish between the operations of my various senses. The emphasis at the beginning of the production was to see him recognise things that we go, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and the bird song and eating and the rain and all the different things that you, the sensations of childhood and obviously the actors, Benedict and Johnny concentrated on seeing it as though it was a child's performance early on. What's fascinating is seeing something come alive that's in a 30-odd year old form and have to re-educate itself. I looked at stroke victims in recovery, I looked at people uh, who'd had severe injuries both in wars or car crashes trying to uh, re-educate their limbs and their bodies. You know, it's a blank canvas as a body but the brain works extremely fast. It's a fully grown brain so it's absorbing everything super quick. Muscular coordination, hand and eye, in a perfect balance. Excellent tissue and the sutras of held. I mean, one of the things that we decided was that we were going to make it a complete body. So that's our approach to it, really, that he's literally been internally rebuilt, not a body assembled from different external parts, like a, the comical idea, almost comical idea, of one leg from one person being stitched onto the torso of another and things like that. But both the concept of the makeup and the engineering of it has to be something which can survive two hours of a very physical show. And I think the makeup people have done the most extraordinary job in creating something which does have that sense of horror, the sense of terrifying work that Victor has done. On a live theatre stage, what should the creature look like? Should he be blue, as in the original productions? Should he be nine foot tall, as in the original illustrations of him? Um, or should he be, as we wanted him to be, clearly human scale and much more resembling someone who's been through surgery? These flashes of light were literally the darkness and the light in which he was... And it was to try and so somehow suggest through a point of view what it was like to have your eyes closed and then to open them and there'll be a light there. What we did by creating electricity, by literally giving ourselves the power of lighting up the night, we no longer had to thank God in the morning for bringing the sunlight back, but it hovers over the book and, and our adaptation in a literal way. We came up with this idea of this roof of electricity, uh, of light, which literally connects you from the back of the auditorium down into the space. But in the production, we wanted to do the Industrial Revolution right at the beginning because it you know, or create a theatrical visualisation of that. We are still living in that era, really, of benefiting and suffering from the consequences of the work that they did then. Music in theatre, since I was last there, it's about 15 years since I worked in the theatre, and it's become a much more bigger part of it. You've got to see plays now, and they're scored in a way that when I last worked in the theatre, they never really were. There was intermittent music, occasional, but very little illustrative music. But it's become much more part of the fashion to do that. So we wanted to do it with a really interesting, a quite a radical band, really. And I've been very privileged to work with Underworld a number of times. And they've done us a lovely job, yeah. Creating a, an early version of the industrial age, you know, the, what was coming, what was just beginning to arrive. Right the way through to a, a, a kind of beautiful idea of nature and his discovery of nature really. <laughs>